Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lectures for college algebra. I'm Jim Helmer and this is the section we've been looking for, section 8.7, the last in the semester here at Bay College. And this system or this section deals with systems of inequalities. Hopefully we recall from early on in the semester, if not, this is good review for any final exam that may be cumulative coming up. Um, we graphed systems of linear inequalities, or not, well, yeah, systems of linear inequalities. Now, if we look at this, hopefully we recall when it comes to inequalities, the first thing we do is we graph a boundary line. Now, that boundary line is determined to be either a dashed line, if it's less than or greater than, or a solid line if it contains the points on the line by having a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to. So if we look at this, if we want to graph the inequality, we're actually dividing our Cartesian coordinate system into two areas, one side of the line and the other side of the line. So to find the solutions, we're actually looking for an area. Now, to find the area that satisfies this inequality, what we need to do is first graph the boundary line. And I look at this and say, OK, I know I'm going to use a dashed line, and I'm now going to graph it as if it was just a line. y equals negative x plus 1. Well, if I do that, it's already in slope-intercept form, so I know my intercept would be 0, 1. And it has a slope of negative 1, so I'd go down 1 and over 1. And two points is all I need to draw a line, so now I'm going to connect them. But I'm using a dashed line because it's only a less than. It says that it does not contain the points on the line. Now, to find an area that satisfies this inequality, I can pick a test point. Well, my go-to test point, if it's available and not on any of my lines, I'm going to choose 0, 0 and just plug it in. Is 0 less than negative 0, which is 0, plus 1? Is 0 less than 1? Well, plugging in that point, this is a true statement. 0 is, in fact, less than 1. So if this is a true statement, any point on this side of the line is also a true statement. So I shade this area. Any value over here will be true. I could pick another point, maybe over here, to make sure it's a false statement, just to check my work to make sure that uh, I got the right side shaded. Now hopefully we remember how to do this with linear equations, because now we're going to take a look at doing the exact same thing with nonlinear equations. So we're going to take a look at this. If this was an equal sign, hopefully we'd recognize it to be a parabola that opens down. Well, a parabola that opens down, if we're just going to graph that, the first thing I want to do is identify what type of line, a solid or a dash. Well, I see this here is only a less than. y is less than negative x squared. So we're actually going to divide the area, or our graph, using a parabola instead of a line. Well, negative x squared is centered at the origin, and I know it opens down, and I'm using a dashed line because it's not equal. Now, I'm just sketching the graph. You could actually plot specific points so that it looks real nice, but we know we have an axis of symmetry that is the y-axis here. Now, essentially what I divided my Cartesian coordinate system into is two different areas, the area outside the parabola and the area inside the parabola. Now I have to pick a test point to say which area is going to make this a true statement. Now, my go-to point of 0, 0 isn't available because that's actually on the curve. And I have to pick a point not on the curve. So I'm going to choose a value inside. This value right here, my test point, is going to be 0, negative 1. Let's just plug it in and see if that's a true statement. If I put negative 1 in for the y, and 0 squared is 0, minus 0 is just 0, is this a true statement? Is negative 1 less than 0? Yes, a negative value is less than 0. Since this is inside my parabola, the area inside makes it a true statement. So I'm going to shade that area. Any value in here will make it true. Just to be sure, let's pick a value out here. It should make my statement false, because the if this was true, anything out here should be false. So I'm going to choose 1, 1 and see what happens. If I put 1 in here, 1 squared is 1, negative 1. Is 1 less than negative 1? No, 1's positive, so it's greater than negative 1. Not a true statement. So I've checked my work. I'm sure that the area inside the parabola is the solution. So now, this was just a parabola. Well, what happens when we have systems 
of nonlinear equations. Well, when it comes to systems of, excuse me, nonlinear inequality, just like we did with linear inequalities, is we had to graph them. So what we're going to do, oh, I'm going to grab a piece of chalk here, is we're going to graph the system. Essentially, we have in a system more than one equation. Here we have two equations. One good thing to do is just kind of identify what you're working with. This one is linear, because x and y are only to the first power. And this one is a parabola. So maybe I want to put them in standard form before I graph them, or you do whatever you're comfortable with at this point in algebra. Well, I look at this and I say, OK, this is just a line. And I'm going to use a solid line, because it's an equal to in this inequality here. So I'm just going to use the intercepts. Well, when x is 0, y is 4. And when y is 0, x is 4. So now I have two points. I know it's a solid line. And I'm just going to go ahead and graph it. So that's my line that represents x plus y is greater than or equal to 4. Now I'm going to graph my parabola. And this is a parabola that shifted up 1, and it opens up. So its vertex is 0, 1. So I'm just going to graph this. And hopefully, you know, my sketch of the graph is relatively accurate. If you want to make it more accurate, plot some specific points. And now I'm going to pick a test point. Well, my go-to piece is 0, 0. But now we have to consider that there are two equations. So my test point has to be tested in both equations. So let's do the line first. If I choose the test point of 0, 0, 0 plus 0 is 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to 4? No, that's not a true statement. So it's false for my line. So I know I'm going to shade the other side of my line. So I'm just going to put little arrows to show I'm going to shade this side of the line. And then for my parabola, I'm going to use that same test point, 0, 0. Is 0 greater than or equal to 0 squared? Is 0 plus 1. Is 0 greater than or equal to 1? No, that's a false statement, which lies outside of my parabola. So I'm going to shade inside my parabola. But now let's consider where do these values overlap. I have to be inside the parabola, but above this line. Well, inside the parabola and above the line would be this area in here. And of course, this line extends out, so you don't want to go between that. So it has to be above the line, but inside the parabola. Anything in here will be a true statement. Since this was false, I could check my work and say, well, maybe if I choose the point 1, 4, which would be a value right here, if I plug that in, it should be true in both. Well, 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 is greater than 4. Uh, 1 squared plus 1 is 2. 4 is greater than 2. That's also a true statement. So it was true for this point in here. So I know this is the right area to be shaded. All right, let's look at another example. Here we have four uh, pieces to our system. They all happen to be linear, which doesn't make it too bad. One thing we should do is always assess these as we go. I say, OK, well, I'm using solid lines everywhere. That makes it easy. I can just do solid lines. But x greater than or equal to 0, well, that just means I'm to the right of the y-axis. So anything over here, well, that's good news. That's straightforward if we just think of it as our Cartesian coordinate system. Any value x must be greater than or equal to 0. y is greater than or equal to 0. Well, that's anything over here but above the x-axis. Well, that means we're limited to the first quadrant. So anything we shade has to be within the first quadrant. Well, that's good news. This information narrowed it down. All right, and the next thing is this line. Well, I'm going to use a solid line, and I'm just going to graph it using its intercept. 4 and 4. And now I can connect that with a nice solid line, because it can equal. And now maybe I want to use this one. Well, if x is 0, y would be 2. And if y is 0, x would be 3. And now I have two points, and I can connect that with a nice straight line. So now, if you think about it, with these lines, I have to be in the first quadrant. But now it's divided into this area, this area, and this area. It's actually divided into three areas. I have to figure out which one is going to be true. Does that mean I have to pick three test points? No. Let's just pick one test point 
that isn't on any of our lines. That means 0, 0 is out of the question. So I'm going to choose this value right here, 1, 1. 1, 1 is a nice, easy point to deal with. And 1 is greater than 0, and 1 is greater than 0. Here, 1 plus 1, is that greater than 4? Well, here's where we have to be careful. What line represents this? Maybe I want to mark that or label this line so I know that when I'm testing it, I'm testing the proper line. So if I put 1 and plus 1 is not greater than 4, so this point is false for this line. So I would shade the other side. Now, looking at this line, I'm going to use that same test point, 1, 1. Is 2 plus 3 greater than 6? No, that's false. So it's on this side of this line. Well, where are these going to overlap? It has to be above both lines, because these are the areas that make this true. And this true would be the areas above this line. So anything in the first quadrant above this line, but not below our axes left or right. So we can see it'd be anything in this area on to infinity, infinite solutions. All right, so here's one to try yourself, not too complex. But in the last two examples, everything was a nice solid line. Make sure you assess these and put in the proper line and find the shaded area that makes all four of these of this system of inequalities a true statement. So this has been section 8.8, .8, Systems of Nonlinear Equations. Thank you for watching.